I first made my millions of dollars. The first time I ever became a millionaire was with webcam studio. Oh, really? I know that. That, yeah, this is how I first ever made money. I mean, I was a kickboxing world champion, but kickboxing is not boxing, right? Yeah. So I'd make like this $100,000 a fight. You fight two or three times a year. You pay 20% to your manager. You pay taxes, but you're not rich, rich. So you get like rich. 30 to 40% of the money. Yeah. And and I didn't consider myself rich, like 30, 40 grand chunks what, twice a year, maybe three times a year and living in London, London mm. rents, need a car. Mm. You're trying, you know, like you're not rich in any way. And that's actually the reason I retired because I woke up one day and I thought, I'm giving six hours a day of absolute focus and energy to this. And I believe I'm smart enough that if I put that much tenacity into something else, I can be a multimillionaire. I truly believed that. I was like, I've realized now I've reached a pinnacle of kickboxing. My choice is either to change over to MMA, which I was offered to do earlier in my career. But at the time, the kickboxing contract paid more money. I had to pay the bills. So I went kickboxing. Change over to MMA, learn to wrestle, change over to UFC, blah, blah, blah. But this is also like seven, eight years ago where even the UFC didn't pay the money it pays now. Mm -hmm. But oh. the UFC still doesn't pay that much money from what I understand. No, if you're like top five or champion, yeah. But most of the dudes you're going to see there in the prelims, they're getting 10 grand to fight, nine grand to fight. It's, not, it's, it's nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So it'd be like starting my career all over again. And at the age of 28, I thought, I don't have the gumption to start again. I, mm -hmm. I, I've done, I've been through hell for this. I've broken my hand eight times. My ribs have been broken. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this all over again. So, so what do you do when you realize that, hey, maybe I don't want to keep fighting? I really, I decide to get rich, rich. My what, what does that mean to you? When, when you sit, when you're sitting there, you're getting, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars kind of net on a per fight basis is rich to you. Like, Hey, I want a couple hundred thousand dollars, a million bucks, $20 million, a billion dollars. I want, I want 30 or 40,000 every month, 30 or 40,000 every month. So about half a million bucks a year, give yeah. or take. Okay. If I had that much money, I could do whatever I wanted. Okay. That's what I decided. So I what's step one that you do? So step one is maybe that's how we ended up here together. My friend, step one is I tried, decided to be very logical about it. Chess player, right? So it's like, I want money. What is money? <laughs> How do banks work? How does credit work? What's fractional reserve banking? All these things we now know to be the biggest cons of the century, right? So I'm sitting there researching money for days and days and days. And then I get more mad because I'm like, whoa, whoa, money's trash and I don't have any. Now I'm really, now I'm really annoyed, right? I thought, I thought like everyone else did that, you know, everyone puts their money in the bank and the money, the bank takes some of other people's money and lends mm -hmm. it out. I didn't know they invented it from the sky. I still, I still at that point thought money was linked to gold. I didn't know nothing. So I'm learning all this stuff and I'm getting really angry. I'm like, now this is really annoying me. So um, anyway, I, I got out a piece of paper there and I'm in my research phase and it started to start writing down some dude on YouTube. I don't know who he was, some dork. He was a pro gold guy. This is before I made Bitcoin was probably around then, but like early. He was a pro gold guy saying buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. And uh, he was saying the difference between an asset, a liability, et cetera, et cetera. So I started trying to write down what I had. I was like, I have an apartment. I have a BMW. I can, I, I'm in good shape, but I already use that for fighting. Uh, you know, what can I do? I can play chess. I'm just writing down the things I have and what I'm good at. And then I kind of realized, I was like, I've got like eight girlfriends. <laughs> but because because I was traveling the world and if you win you get a ring girl it's kind of like just she, she's banging the winner right you win a world title you get to choose the ring girl you want it's pretty easy right so I had a girlfriend in Slovakia I had a girlfriend in France I had a girlfriend in England girlfriend all these girlfriends do they know about each other no okay but they find out pretty soon so um I had all these girlfriends so I'm like maybe I could open a strip club and like be a pimp and, you know be a gangster about it da, da, da. and then that opening strip club. That, takes. That's literally the first thing you thought about was well, opening well, a strip club. Well, I thought I have these beautiful girls. How can I, this is before like Twitch existed. Hmm. So I was like, what can I do with these hot girls? I was like, it's just an asset, right? There's these girls and a lot of them were messaging me. They thought I was this millionaire world champion. They all wanted to come London, live with me and thought I was a big boy millionaire and all this stuff. So it's like, they, they do because want of social media. But, well, partially because of that. And also because they met me, I turn up, I fight, I win. I win the world title. I leave. We're texting each other. They don't, they assume I'm this big yep. boy, right? So I'm kind of like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I thought, man, I, I investigated strip clubs, way too much money. But this, these, this asset class of beautiful women was kind of on my mind for a few days. And then by absolute coincidence, I stumbled upon somewhere on the internet. I was on some, one of those websites where you used to download like free games and bullshit from. And in the corner somewhere, it said, hot girls want to talk to you now or something. I said, hot girls. So I clicked on that, not because I was interested, but because I thought I have hot girls. And it was one of those webcam websites. And I was like, ah, so these girls sit here and talk to dudes for money. 
So I'm going to get my girls to and see. And they're uh, naked. They're just talking. Uh, how does it work? It's 50-50. I mean, it depends on the girl. Depends what she wants to do. But the, the, the majority of the job is not based around being naked. The majority of the job is based around being entertaining and being uh, easy to talk to. And the guys who are talking to you need to find you uh, that you need to remember their name, remember their dog's name. You have to be smart. You can't just be a girl and be a bimbo and be naked and make money. You have to be really smart, charming, interesting, happy all the time, positive. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm going to try this. So I messaged all five of my girlfriends, told them I had a job for them, explained them what I was going to do. I was going to launch this company. Four of them agreed. All four flew in, sat around the same table. They were all like, who's she, who's she, who's she? I'm like, well, you're all my girlfriends. Two more left. And, and then uh, two stayed. And that was the beginning of my little uh, attempt at a webcam empire. And I, I put the girls there. And, and my role in it all was I did all the tech side of stuff, which is the first thing, of course. And then also, and I get called a pimp a lot. But I, and the reason I use the term is because I don't see it as a negative term. I see it as positively inspirational and motivating person. I was, I'd motivate the girls. I'd make sure they did their job properly. If they had a bad day online, I'd come up with a good excuse for them. Oh, it's been a football game. It's been really busy. Don't worry. You're so beautiful. Don't be upset. You did better than her. She, she you did the best today. Did a, I keep everything organized, put the schedules together, all that kind of stuff. And uh, is it hard? It's hard because women have to want to work for you. Okay. Women have to want to obey you. That's okay. what's hard. And you don't do that. This is one of the biggest misconceptions. I really want to cl- clear this up. People are, in the movies and stuff, pimps are like aggressive, mean men. Complete opposite. Pimps are more like James Bond. James Bond's a pimp. He sleeps with a girl to get information. He doesn't care about her. He is absolutely not really a pimp. He doesn't hit her. He makes her love him. She does what he wants. He uses sex as a weapon to reward her. And then he disappears. That James Bond is absolutely not really a pimp. So I say pimp because everyone calls me a pimp online, tries to go, ha ha, you're a pimp, like I'm going to get offended. It's like, no, beautiful women wanted to work for me and they wanted to work for me because I displayed supreme, supreme competence. And they knew if they worked for me, they'd make a lot of money. So whenever I was out, I'd, I'd meet a waitress and say, well, you're, look, you're working 10 hours a day for pennies. You can work 10 hours a day for me, make 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month. And over time, I just build up this big, this big little we- em- empire of webcam girls. At one, one point, I had four locations, 75 girls working for me. And, I was and, doing- and we say locations like, Explain what goes into a location. I just rent houses. All right. So you rent a house and in the house, you just literally, hey, go live here. There's like technology set up and then you can basically uh, just sit in front of the computer and literally be on the other end of one of these webcams and guys are paying by the minute, by the hour, whatever to talk to you. Uh, It's their choice whether they are doing it fully clothed, just talking, getting naked, whatever. And then you're taking some cut of it. Yeah, basically. So I had girls who would live in the house. And that was pretty impressive. I just broke down the webcam business. You You nailed it. No background information. Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. So the girls who lived in the house would have a set amount of hours they want to do. And then we'd have rooms that they could book in and and do X amount of hours. A girl could come and do one a week or whatever. We'd have rooms they could share. And then, um, yeah, very much exactly like you said. They'd they'd go online. They'd do their hours. They'd have their regular customers. They'd get their money. And then I'd take around half of the money, around 50%. You take 50%. Around 50%. Okay. Is that high or low compared to the rest of the Well, I'll tell you why it's very low. It's low because every time a girl would quit and try and do it by herself, she'd make a fraction of the money overall because she hasn't got the instruction. She hasn't got the motivation. She's just lazy with it, right? And women have a very different mentality to money than men. If you show a woman how to make $1,000 in an hour, she'll think, I only, have to, I only have to work an hour a week. Whereas if you show a man how to make $1,000 in an hour, he thinks, ah, I can make $18,000 a day. That's the difference between us. So if I had a girl working for me making $20,000, she got ten, dollars I got ten. dollars If she quit, she'd make three for herself, if that. 